Hi, I'm Fast Forward's Mike Zipser, and joining me here is author Mindy Klasky. Mindy, welcome back to Fast Forward. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, we have you here as two people, uh, Mindy Klasky and Morgan Keyes. That's right. And uh, you write, as Morgan, you write um, kind of young people's books, uh, right. the Dark Beast novels mm -hmm. in particular. And as Mindy Klasky, your latest is, uh, I guess it's called Category Romance? That's right. Um, it's Category Romance. When I first sold um, Dark Beast uh, to my editor at Simon & Schuster, um, she said, so let's see, what was your last book out? And I told her it was The Mogul's Maybe Marriage. And she said, and what pen name will you be using with us? <laughs> right, because we talked about this before. You also didn't want the audience for the Dark Beast books to go pick up something like your your first novels, the the, the Glass Wright series, by accident. That's right. The Glass Wright series is a fantasy series with a 13-year-old heroine. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, so it would be reasonable for a 13-year-old child to pick them up, but they're much darker books with a fair amount of violence, with a lot of um, social questioning, and I wanted to put a little more of a divide there um, than uh, obviously people on the internet are going to be able to find that Morgan Keyes and Mindy Klasky are the same person. Right. Yeah. I mean, the Glass Wright books were, were really adult yes. books and, and a lot of very disturbing mm -hmm. incidents and imagery in them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you wouldn't want a kid picking them up thinking, oh, this is nice. <laughs> but the Dark Beast books have their own um, kind of rebellious qualities and they're not simple little little story going on. Um, definitely not. Um, the, in the Dark Beast world, every child is born and has a Dark Beast that is um, bound to them um, upon their birth. And when the child turns 12, um, she is expected to sacrifice that Dark Beast and then become a full-blown adult member of society. Um, and the Dark Beast series is about a girl who decides not to sacrifice her Dark Beast. And so she's rebelling against the religion of her parents. She is setting forth on a road by herself. Um, she ultimately finds some allies along the way. Um, but it's not an easy, go, lucky, happy story. And it's got theater people in it. It does have theater people in it. <laughs> um, I think that everything I write has theater people in <laughs> That's it. That's true. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, you're writing as Mindy Klasky and Morgan Keyes as these kind of two persona, mm -hmm. what's it like? Do you actually think differently when you're writing as Morgan than as Mindy? I don't think differently. Um, my writing behavior is different. Um, Mindy tends to write books that um, have fairly long chapters, about 5,000 word chapters. Um, and um, Morgan writes at the most 2,500 word chapters. And so Mindy's writing schedule has um, days where if I can get a single chapter done in a day, that's a tremendous accomplishment. Um, if Morgan doesn't get two chapters done in a day, she might be falling behind her publishing schedule. So <laughs> I need to keep all of that straight. So, and Let's talk a little bit about, because one of the things you're, you're pretty good at is using social media um, to help kind of brand and help sell your books. Is there a difference in how the two people use social media? Um, very, very much of a uh, difference. Um, most, uh, Dark Beast is intended for a middle grade audience, which sort of tops out at around age 12. And most kids 12 and younger are not on Facebook. They're not on Twitter. Um, they don't really follow blogs. And so most of my promotion as Morgan is directed to parents, it's directed to librarians, it's directed to the gatekeepers who are helping children make decisions about what they're going to read. Right, you've even done uh, study guides. Right. For um, teachers and librarians to use with the Dark Beast books. What kind of things are in there? How'd you put them together? Um, I put together a set of questions that are the sort of questions that a teacher would ask kids to write book reports about um, if the teacher hasn't had a chance to read the book yet. Um, I put together a set of uh, classroom projects, um, a sort of arts and crafts projects or theater arts um, projects um, that kids could do um, uh, if they had an open-ended assignment like that. Do a project about your favorite book. Um, but I also put together a guide to having a Dark Beast birthday party um, with different games and activities and party favors and things like that. So, What kind of things would you do at a Dark Beast? 
Um, well, Earthling one thing that you would do is to take a quiz to find out um, which dark beast is yours, and then to uh, do arts and crafts projects, to um, create your own dark beast, to figure out, um, because everybody who attends a dark beast party is going to choose to spare their dark beast, what not would help. sacrifice their dark beast. Um, and so the, the party activities are, are really built around animals and, and um, creative play. Yes, and I took the quiz. You have yes. it online. And uh, my dark beast turns out to be a rat. I'm a rat, too. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. It's like all the quizzes you see online about, you know, what this are you mm -hmm. and what character from that would you be. So it was kind of interesting. Um, I had fun putting it together. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, world building mm -hmm. because, you know, when you write your fantasy, they're not taking place in our world. And, you know, the world building, building there is the classic kind of world build, building we see. But when you're writing the, your romance novels, mm -hmm. um, your latest of which is you're starting a series of uh, books that are baseball romances, right. like Perfect Pitch. Is, or, yeah. per Perfect Pitch Perfect is the first Pitch one of the, the Diamond Brides romances. Yes, and that takes place in our world. Right. Um, this in Raleigh, actually, mm -hmm. North Carolina. But you've talked about that you do world building for those as well. What kind of world building does that entail? Well, as you said, in the Dark Beast books, I needed to figure out the entire religion of the people, and there are 12 different gods, and each god has his or her own temple, and each is worshipped with a certain animal, and all of those details I have to work out ahead of time, and I have a million different note cards that keep those straight for me, electronic note cards. Um, for the Diamond Bride series, I have a different sort of world building. Um, I do need to keep track of the Raleigh that I have created, um, where certain restaurants are, where different characters live, um, and I tend not to use real places um, so that if something bad happens, nobody can come and uh, be cranky with me. Um, also, because I'm working with a professional baseball team, I've needed to create my own team. Um, it's the Raleigh Rockets, um, which are not a real baseball team, um, because Major League gets very, very cranky if you use mm. their trademarks, um, especially if you disparage them in any way. Um, so my characters are the Rockets who go and play in New York. Um, and I never specify which team. I never specify whether they're in the American League or the National League. That's right, because um, I was, uh, was reading some mm -hmm. of it, and you say, we're playing New York. Um, and I never specify whether the pitcher bats, which he would do in the National League, but would not do in the American <laughs> League. So um, there are lots of details like that. It's not so much world building as it is almost world taking down, world paring away. Um, but the world of romance novels is a constructed world in the same way that speculative fiction has constructed worlds. Um, the, the most clear way of explaining it to people who don't read a lot of romance is that in romance novels, you have a group of men who are more interested in talking about their relationships than any men anywhere in the entire history of the world. And when the women in these novels um, start to talk to the men, the men are equally interested in having a discussion about where they stand in their relationship and That's what shocking. is happening in their relationship, much more so than any man I've ever known. Um, so it's part of the whole um, construct of a romance world and how romance novels work. And you've done what I guess we'd call paranormal romances, right. your Make-A-Wish series, the Jay Madison. Right. And those, I imagine, would combine both styles of world building. A absolutely. Um, in the Jane Madison series, which is about a librarian who finds out that she's a witch, um, I needed to create a pretend library in Georgetown here in D.C. Um, and I needed to work out where it was and I needed to work out what restaurants were nearby and the same sort of world building that I'm talking about for the romance novels. Um, but then I also had to figure out what spells she used, how, what, how herbs worked, how stones worked, all of the crystals, all of the different um, spell elements that she works with. Interesting. Um, now in... Is one one other thing. Um, are we going to see more Dark Beast books, or because it's the end of Dark Beast Rebellion? It seems right. things are pretty settled. At the moment, I don't have a contract to write more Dark Beast books. What I would love to do, and won't have time to do until the end of 2014 at the earliest. Um, what I would love to do is to write some adult novels that are set in the Dark Beast world. 
and to weave in um, the stories about Kira and Taggart and Goran, the main characters of the, of the Darkby series as it currently exists, with an sort of expanded view of the world and see what the adults think about the events that have been taken on, taken on primarily by the children in uh, the two books that are out so far. Yeah, I would imagine when you build a whole world like that, you've got the whole economic structure mm -hmm. and the social structure and the religion that you've you must be hit by stories all the time when you're putting that all together. There are a lot of different angles that I've considered going with uh, the Dark Beast world, and um, all I need is more time to write them. <laughs> and what's keeping you busy in 2014 is the Diamond Brides? Diamond Brides is keeping me busy. There will be one a month issued for all of baseball season. Wow. Um, and they're short novels. Um, they're about 45,000 words, um, but they um, will be coming out like clockwork. And one of the interesting things about them is that they're coming out from Bookview Cafe. That's right. We've had other Bookview writers on here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us some about what Bookview Cafe is? Um, Bookview Cafe is an author-run publishing company. Um, we have about 40 members, um, including Ursula K. Le Guin and Vonda McIntyre, um, Sherwood Smith. Um, I could keep naming 40 <laughs> names. Um, it was primarily a group of speculative fiction writers who um, were dissatisfied with the way traditional publishing was being done. And so the group started about five years ago and originally had a focus on giving away free fiction that was related to the novels that the authors were selling through more mainstream channels. And over time, it has evolved um, to the point that I am publishing ebooks and print books um, through BookView. Um, with our members, we um, provide editorial services, we provide copy editing services, cover design services, um, promotion and publicity that we are doing to help each other. Um, we spend a lot of time online with each other talking about um, ideas and developing stories and figuring out where there's space in the market for uh, different ideas, where there isn't space in a traditional market um, for ideas that are really far out there, but people um, want want to write stories that are not being picked up by mainstream publishing. Um, and BookView is helping us all do all of that. Yeah, I, I just think it's fascinating that the, the authors got together to kind of create their own publishing house. And we have our own website. We sell books through the website. Um, almost all of our books are also sold through traditional channels, um, through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple, Kobo, um, most of the online stores. Um, but they're also available um, on the BookView site um, without any DRM, which is one of the key things that we have um, prided ourselves on. And that's something to be proud of. And I have bought bo books from, mm -hmm. just out in the interest of full disclosure, <laughs> I have bought books from BookView Cafe, and uh, it's a really good service. And they've got the, the kinds of things they have. It's wide open. Mm -hmm. I was actually a little surprised when I saw that that the Diamond Brides books, you know, Category mm -hmm. Romance was on BookView. I knew it mostly as speculative fiction, right. science fiction, fantasy. We have about a half dozen members who have published books that get tagged as romance. Um, there are two other members who have written a fair amount of Category Romance, um, and there may be more down the line. And, and yeah, the, the marketing end of it is, is really good too. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm actually very interested, because these days the writers have to market themselves. And we talked about the things you do online and social media, but w is that different for romance? Um, romance is different. Um, to, to some extent, the difference is th the top blogs in romance are not surprisingly different than the top blogs in speculative fiction. Um, but there's a much longer tradition of romance readers reading electronic books. Um, romance readers were very early adopters of ebooks. Um, I think largely because people didn't want people to see the covers of the books that they were reading, and um, they wanted the privacy of reading an electronic book. Um, and so um, there is a very highly developed um, blog system of romance readers who are out there. Um, romance readers are also tend to be very active with Romance Writers of America, which is a, a group like um, science fiction writers, uh, science fiction and fantasy writers of America. Um, but Romance Writers of America allows in um, pre-published authors, um, which most of us would say are readers and fans. Um, and so there's a fair amount of um, promotion to be done through RWA. And 
is that a good thing, do you think, getting, getting the readers involved? Does it help particularly in that, in that genre? Um, I think it does help to get readers involved. Um, I think that um, as a writer, I need to know what readers are interested in, and I have very much profited from being able to go to my local RWA meeting. Um, to be clear, um, to join RWA, you have to have an interest in a publishing career. You can't just say, hi, I like reading, I want to be there. Um, but there are members who have not yet published, and that adds a, uh, an awareness to the group of the struggles that unpublished authors are facing, and also an experimental nature to the group, um, where um, electronic publishing in all of its forms is being pushed, um, I think, more by RWA than any of the other writers' organizations. Now, are you looking, looking towards the future once you finish your Diamond Brides and get uh, that set done? Are you looking to go do more fantasy? Um, Have you I've, ever thought about writing science fiction? Um, I have written some, I, I have yeah. written a couple of science fiction short stories. Um, the science fiction that interests me is social science fiction. Um, I don't have a hard science background, and so far none of the stories that have come to me um, would require me to go back and get the astrophysics degree that I passed on as an undergraduate. Um, but I'm very interested in sociology and anthropology and the effect of technology on our society. Um, and so there is a possibility that there's some science fiction book out there um, that is waiting for me to discover it. Um, I think right now um, my projected schedule after Diamond Brides um, would include an adult um, Dark Beast book and then another uh, Jane Madison book. Ah. Um, uh, Single Witch's Survival Guide, which is the most recent of the Jane Madison books, um, wraps up a story, but there is clearly another one waiting after that. So, <laughs> Oh, that's good to know. Good to know. Some more Jane Madison, some more Dark Beast. Um, have any more uh, romances in mind? Um, there may be a similar series to the Diamond Brides romances that will involve um, one of my many past careers, um, a, a law firm. Um, and following up. Um, in Diamond Brides, each book concerns a different one of the position players on the team and the woman who loves him. Um, and I am considering writing a similar series uh, using a small law firm and each lawyer in the firm and his or her true love. Well, Mindy, um, we're running out of time. I want to thank you very much for being here. And I look forward to all the books coming out. And, uh, and good luck. Thank you very, very much. It's been a pleasure. It certainly has. Well, from all of us here in Fast Forward, this is Mike Zipser saying, take care. <laughs>